Hello, I am Michelle. That was weird. Hey, I'm Michelle with Michelle Loves Books. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a review for you of The Queen's Assassin by Melissa De La Cruz. I haven't done a review. I think I only have like two single reviews. Everything else is just like thrown into wrap ups. Anyways, The Queen's Assassin is the first in a new series by Melissa De La Cruz called The Queen's Secret. This is about Callendon Holt, who is the Queen's Assassin. He's on a mission to seek out threats against the Kingdom of Renovia, protect her and the princess, as well as retrieve a valuable artifact in order to free him from a magical vow. He winds up with this like mysterious apprentice called Shadow who has been training her entire life to become an assassin as fierce and as notorious as Kalendon himself. She also has this supernatural gift that she has been learning to control. These two wind up on a journey together to infiltrate another kingdom in order to find a traitor. On their journey, they start to develop some feelings for each other. They also discover this web of lies and deception. So I really enjoyed this book. I had a lot of fun with it. And I think that that's probably the best description for it, that it is a fun book. It is what it is, it's a YA fantasy. Certain things are a little bit predictable, like the love interest. It's a setting with royals and assassins, and there's a magical system. So nothing exactly new, but I can't really knock it for that just because it's fun and it was a well-paced book. There's just a touch of magic, it wasn't really overdone. I think I would have liked it a little bit more if we got to see some more of her magic. I couldn't really decide whether to give this a 3.5 or 4 stars. I thought that the deception was extremely clever, but there was a little bit too much foreshadowing that revealed too much too soon. I do like the relationship development, although it's predictable who's going to fall in love with who. It is a hate to love relationship, forbidden romance. But in this instance, I thought it was done really well. It had progression, it had purpose, and you're not like thrown into it. There's appropriate angst, swoon-worthy, steamy scenes, leaving you begging for more. There are finally just a couple things that I noticed. There were some moments that were a little overly repetitive, but I've been noticing that a lot in stories, especially young adult stories. I'm starting to find that I get a little irritated with. Another thing is that this story is told in a dual perspective, one from Shadow's perspective and one from Kalendon's perspective. I'm not actually sure it was necessary for this story. If it was not that way, it would, I feel like it would have had the same impact. There might've only been a couple of times where it was nice to get into the other character's thoughts and feelings. But the bigger criticism I have, this goes with the fact that my copy is an advanced reader copy and a lot of times they are not fully polished. And so there might be some edits that happen for the final copy. But I didn't even notice it until about 100 pages in. But being that it's a dual perspective, Shadow's perspective, it was I statements, first person perspective. But in Kaladin's, Kaladin, I can't ever say his name, in Kaladin's perspective chapters, it's a third person perspective. So I don't know if this is a typo or it's intentional. It's just something that I noticed. And so once I noticed it, I couldn't get it out of my head. So overall, I did really enjoy this book. I had a lot of fun with it, but it wasn't particularly very exciting and deep. All right, well, that wraps up this review. This book, again, comes out next month, February 4th. Later, bye.